Yes, I have. Okay, great. So thank you everyone for joining us today at the virtual QM Regional Conference. And so we will be talking about course design with an emphasis on interaction and engagement using AR and VR technology. And so I'm Jennifer Redd. I'm the director of eCampus at San Jose State University. And I'm Inji Liu. Uh, I'm the leading instructional designer at eCampus. So um, today we are gonna share with you um, some projects we have been conducted through our eCampus Immersive Learning Institute. Uh, so first, we'll just give you a brief introduction of the Immersive Learning Institute. So we, uh, each spring semester, we have this Immersive Learning Institute who court. Usually it's about uh, 10 faculty across multiple disciplines. Uh, so the goal is to help build a faculty community. As we work with faculty on AR VR project, we find many uh, faculty they have uh, similar AR VR project interests. So it's a great opportunity to build a learning community and encourage uh, the interdisciplinary collaboration. Uh, and also the participants can take both the instructor role and also the learner role uh, when they go through the list of workshops, uh, explore AR VR resources together, and explore the best practice and pedagogy on uh, how to integrate AR VR into their classroom. And they also have the hands on oppor opportunity uh, to work on different technology, um, test out different uh, technology options. They also work one-on-one -on -one with the instructional designer to figure out uh, what's the best way for their courses, uh, how to integrate AR VR into the course seamlessly and in a meaningful way. Uh, so today we are just going to share with you two projects uh, through the presentation and showcase how our immersive faculty um, use AR VR to encourage interaction and engagement. Uh, through uh, the course design using AR VR. So one of the first things um, that we wanted to keep in mind when working with faculty on these projects is to think about the alignment. And so really this focuses in on the QM standards, both five and six. And so I've noted a couple of the questions that we, when working with the faculty members on their projects, we really encourage them to think about, right? So how do the learning activities promote the achievement of the stated learning objectives, right? So not just having the objectives and then saying, oh, well, I think I might want to do this, but really looking at what that alignment is between that activity and what that objective is stating. Okay, and then also thinking about what are these different interaction opportunities that you're gonna be providing for the students? So will these activities support active learning? Are the students doing something? You know, have there been clear instructions provided? And thinking about the ways that they're gonna connect with others, right? So they're just connecting with the instructor, um, with their peers, with the content. And then also, you know, the key element with this is to make sure that the requirements are very clear, right? So that should be clearly stated within the project description, within the module, as part of that um, with the objectives. When we're thinking about, you know, QM standard six, right? So it's, again, it's not just picking any tools just because maybe that's the most popular item out now, but thinking about how, you know, the tool that's selective is really gonna support the learning objectives. And also, will they promote that learner engagement? And so one of the parts of the project is exploring what's out there and looking at the pros and cons of each item and then thinking about what would work best in this particular case to help to meet those learning objectives. And so we do have this, you know, alignment that we're looking for. And so really the QM standards help to pro provide a guide for this as we're working with the faculty members in selecting both the activities as well as the tools that they would be using in their courses. 
So the first project uh, we want to share with you is AR Sustainability Campus Tour project. So it's from a geology department with uh, when I work with Professor Li An Tarura. So this project uh, is kind of around the Earth Day uh, time. So it's a component where the professor plan to just uh, describe uh, the project and how to uh, ask a student to explore different sites on campus and then uh, connect those sites with what they learn in class on sustainability topic. So the learning objective before is kind of um, very vague and students will uh, only learn through reading and watching video and also exploring the uh, sites through campus map. So we discuss about this project. We think it will be a good opportunity to integrate uh, AR um, tour uh, to encourage students to engage with the activity. So, uh, so the students will start to research the sustainability practice and they will locate examples uh, of different sites on campus they will use the technology tool, it's called a Metaverse, is an AR uh, location-based tool uh, app, allows students to uh, visit different sites and they can also create uh, interactive uh, components when they are on the site. At the end, so each student will showcase the tour stop uh, during the class tour. They also work as group uh, if they want to create this tour and they will re write a reflection uh, on what they learned through these projects. So um, next. So on the left uh, is a screenshot of what the students, uh, when the students do the sustain sustainability uh, activity before uh, using the regular uh, map tool. So students will click on each spot to explore the topic. Uh, uh, right now with AR technology, the students are able to uh, go to the site using their mobile phone and then the interactive overlay information will pop up allow students to uh, learn more about information of that site regarding sustainability topic. So at the beginning, the uh, instructor created uh, like one example tour uh, for students to explore and also learn about the features, the technologies. Uh, later on, when students are, under, are more familiar with the tool, uh, so they can create the tool uh, Tour using the Metaverse app. So through the QM standard lens, um, the, it allows students to have the uh, meaningful interaction uh, between the instructor and other peers and also the learning materials. So instead of them learning the sustainability topics through reading and watching the materials, uh, through this AR tour activity, will engage them in uh, exploration uh, in practice and they also uh, through creation. So students, they are able to actively interact with the, the content and interact with peers and interact with uh, instructor. So that's more on the standard five, how this type of activity encourages interactions uh, among instructors, students, and the materials. Before is mainly just the in interaction between students and the content. Uh, now with the tool, uh, the students engage more active learning approach. So they actively explore the campus, and they actively have the discussion with peers and find the stop stops they want to uh, elaborate during the tour. 
so and, and also share that tool with uh, other peers. So it's more engaging than previous. And regarding standard six, so the technology used is aligned with the learning objective to engage the learners in active learning. Um, the instructor also offered clear in information instruction to students so they fully understand how to access and use the tool. And also the tool is free and very educational friendly. So uh, when the instructor explained to students how they would benefit from participating in this AR tour activity, so they not only um, are interested in this activity, they also are interested in this tool, the potential. So uh, with the rich uh, features within the tool, so students can be creative, they can do audio, they can do image overlay. Uh, so if they uh, do not want to do location-based, they can post QR code for friends just to with the site uh, without going out. So there are lots of options for them. So in the poster survey, the students all gave very positive comments. And some students also uh, commented they started to use it in other classes. Uh, for instance, I remember one, one student used it for art history class as the student uh, created uh, one AR art tour for the class projects. So uh, that's the first example of how uh, we use AR technology uh, in the course design. So the second example is nursing uh, Google tour. So this uh, example highlights the, the tool we selected is a Google tour creator. And the activity is about how to identify infectious sites in a hospital room. So I think this topic is very close to what we are experiencing in, in the current situation, right? So um, the students need to identify the top infectious sites in the hospital room. And they will also discuss uh, what in type of intervention uh, they can do when they need to clean the infectious site and they also need to label the most infectious sites in the room. Um, just for the fun, if you want to type in the chat, we will check later. If you think of what, what's the top infectious site in the classroom, uh, in the not classroom, in the hospital room. <laughs> so, uh, so the uh, next page. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can refer to the options we have here. Uh, so uh, you have four options right now. So this activity, the instructor uh, start with uh, inviting a fellow student. So she think this Google tour creator is very easy to use. So she even invited a grad student to uh, elaborate how to use the tool and demonstrate. So give another uh, fellow student the opportunity to lead the activity. So it's very easy to be adopted in classroom. Uh, the instructor start with a research activity. So students will, uh, before the activity, the pretest is students identify the top uh, infection sites in the hospital room, just like how I asked you to do it. And then the instructor asks the student to engage uh, with peers reading the research articles together. Uh, and then based on what they discuss, what they find, the instructor share with the students a 360 image of one hospital room, and then ask them to label. So you see those uh, circles with eye, we call those point of interest. So they will click on the different spots and label them uh, what, what are the the points they think are the most infectious and then students will add the research findings they find uh, in the point of interest. So later on when they share what they have created, other classmates can click on the spots and then read what they find uh, based on the evidence they find from the research article. And after that, so the instructor asks a student to uh, check out the 
the tour she created. And then the student can pick the top uh, infection site from the, the one the instructor labeled. So the student will be able to go back uh, to have a discussion with the class, with the group, and then go back to revise what they labeled on their own uh, tour. So that's uh, the activity uh, in nursing um, is with uh, Dr. Alice but but laugh. So the from the QM standard perspective for standard five um, and the standard six, so the technology really align the uh, outcome uh, very nicely. Uh, so the tool we selected, the Google Tour Creator, is free, very educational friendly. Uh, it help the student meet the learning ob ob outcomes uh, easily uh, because using the creator, the student I are able to identify, uh, label the infectious size in the 360 hospital room image. Uh, the students are able to apply what they learned from the research article and then label the most infectious size. Uh, so the working group, the engaging group discussion, and also class-wide discussion to revise their point of interest of the most uh, infectious sites. Uh, the Google Tour Creator itself, like I said, is free and, and it's also accessible uh, both in the VR mode. If you uh, turn into VR mode and put on the Google Cardboard, you can view like that. It also uh, can be viewed just through the standard 2D web mode when you open up a browser. So it's very easy for students to use. Um, it offers rich opportunity for students to interact with the learning materials and with classmates. Uh, and also the instructor made it very clear and clear. So she created uh, guides and also invite fellow students uh, to explain why the tool, the Google Tour Creator is used to help students achieve the learning goals. So the final survey uh, really gave us a good feedback, positive feedback. As many of the students, they adopted, the, they think the tool is easy to use, they enjoy the, uh, the experience, and they also start to use this tool in other nursing education activities. So they find this might be a good opportunity for them to build a tour for their patients or for other uh, nurse uh, educators uh, on the nursing topics. Uh, so that's the second example, how the te VR technology is used in course design. Right, so Yingji was walking us through those two examples, um, and then she kind of described to us all the different ways um, that there was the interaction and the alignment between what the outcome was as well as the tool selected. Um, but another piece to this is also encouraging faculty, so whether you are a faculty member or you're an instructional designer or course builder, um, to really be thinking about the different interaction opportunities that you're going to be presenting as within the course or as part of that activity. And so within this table here, it's just trying to help line up the different things that Yingji was mentioning. So between, you know, the, both of these projects, you know, one had a field guide that had some built-in guidance. So that helped to provide support for the student to continue to read through a diff additional information with um, different practice articles, as well as there was a pretest and post-test or surveys that were completed to help to gather additional information about what the um, students' experiences were and if they've mastered the information that it was intended for those particular lessons. There's also been opportunities for the learners to interact with other learners. So as kind of described with the examples, yes, some of these pieces could be done alone but the, the richness of the activity was the follow-up discussions um, that would occur within the classes, right? So with that last example, when you were taking, you know, I picked this or I picked that, and then people describing kind of why they picked that, and that's where the instructor can intervene and kind of give some more 
um, information about, no, this is the particular area, um, you know, that is the dirtiest for that example. Um, also, with um, different tools, you might not have, you know, a full set for every single person in the room, and that's not necessary. Um, you know, like was mentioned, you could look at it through the web browser, you could still use it through, um, you know, a headset, but often you're partnering or having uh, small groups work together. So there is that opportunity to engage with others. And then finally, just thinking about how the learner is interacting with the instructor, right? So there may be some deliverables that are due at the end of the project to help to gather, you know, if the students have mastered the information or if they had, you know, further questions. And so this is the way that the instructor can be giving comments and feedback. And so for these examples, the students did submit an annotated bibliography. They also had their Google Tour URL that was edited that they submitted. And for the first example, they had their field guide that they completed as part of the project and they submitted that for the instructor to review. So it is important to think about, you know, the different interaction opportunities that are presented and even making kind of a list of all of those for that particular project. So you can confirm that you're presenting them with different ways to engage and not just, you know, everything is just with the content or, you know, just with others or just with the instructor. So we did come up with final um, three tips for you as you're thinking about, well, what can I do next? Um, you know, what, what should I be thinking about? Right, so you want to identify the criteria for developing the activity so that it can appeal for a wide variety of learners. Right, so you don't want to select a tool that is very difficult to use. Um, so like the ones we showcased, they're very easy to adopt. They've been, you know, used a lot within education, so it makes it easier to appeal to a variety of learners and also offering engagement in different modes. So whether it's through the computer or through a headset or a handheld device. You also want to make sure that you're aligning those course objectives with the activities as well as with the technology, but also keeping an emphasis on that student engagement component. Right, so you want to make sure that the students will be engaged throughout that lesson and you're looking at how the objective and activity and technology kind of all are aligning each other. And finally, you want to explore ways that can promote, you know, the interaction as was showcased in the last slide. So with the content, with other learners and the instructor. So keeping that in mind as you're developing um, a rich AR or VR lesson, you want to provide all these different types of opportunities for engagement and interaction. So it looks like we have just a couple minutes left. So I think we'll take a look at the questions that we've received. So your first question is from Lori. She wants to know, is Metaverse free? Do you know of the interface with LMS Canvas? Uh, it's free, it's app-based. So um, you can share, uh, once you have the QR code, you can share, uh, you can share your tour. So you can maybe create a discussion board in your uh, forum in learning management system. So that way you can share with students uh, or students share with others, uh, but it's app based. So you can download that free app um, on your uh, uh, mobile app. You can create the tour uh, on your computer. You can share with others. Mm -hmm. So Susan asks, what's the name of the tool used in the first example of tours? It's called a Metaverse. I will type in the chat. And then Ada asks, would you give some information how you use AR? Or is there, is there an app or web link you use to create an AR field trip? Uh, I think that's kind of similar to the first question, right? So I can pull up the URL. Uh, just give me a sec. You can continue with other question. I will uh, okay. type it. Mm -hmm. So we have an anonymous uh, question that says, what tools have been most successful in your experience? Um, I would say the, um, the Google Tour creator. Um, you know, we had an event that we held on our campus and we had about 60 people 60 faculty members attend where we 
explored that and had hands-on opportunities. Um, we have some, you know, devices that they could use uh, so they could test things out, kind of preloaded with activities. Um, so I would say that kind of overall would be one of the top ones, um, just for ease of use and able to access on a, in a variety of ways. Did you want to add one, Yingji? Yeah, I, I think the, that one is definitely. Um, and this semester we are also exploring uh, like, uh, yeah, why let, let me paste the first one. So in the chat, I paste the, the AR tour option, uh, it's called Manwars. And another AR grid tool uh, right now I'm working with faculty uh, uh, to explore is from Adobe. Uh, it's called Adobe Arial. So that's also, if you are exploring AR option, so that's definitely a great tool to explore uh, with a lot of features. Uh, okay, well, we have one question oh. left and that's all we have time for because we're just, we're one minute past. So what type of camera do you use for your 360 photos? C could you repeat the question? Hmm. What kind of camera? do you use for your 360 photos? There are um, two options. One is if you use a 360 camera, uh, one we really like is called Insta360. Another way to use, especially when you work with students, if you do not have the equipment, you can use app to take 360 photo. For instance, it's called cardboard uh, camera. I will type in the chat. It's a free, app from Google, cardboard camera. So the student can download the app to their phone and then they, when they uh, load uh, the app, they can just turn, rotate, um, and then take the kind of like fake 360 photo. Yeah. So Insta360 okay, well, or, or the app. Mm -hmm. We're out of time, so I want to thank both of our presenters. Thank you very much for doing your presentation today and for doing the virtual conference um, and using Zoom. I know it's been difficult for everybody to get all this figured out, but thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. So, um, thank you.